Thank you for joining us this morning. We'll be reviewing the newspapers. And joining us this morning is the publisher, Sikia News, Chris Kendi Mwadu. Mwadu, good morning. Good Thank you very much for joining me. On <laughs> good morning. <laughs> you know, I think this is a red season. Last time you came, you came yeah. with your Ishiagu and yeah. the red car. But yeah. today you're coming with a red shirt that has, yeah. I don't know which is that, me, I'm a bush I don't want to call that. Ukwago. Ukwago. <laughs> 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 All right, let's get into the papers this morning. We'll be starting off with this Nigerian newspaper. On the front page, the big story says, Tinubu to sweep out Deadwood ministers. It will be interesting. Maybe I'll put Sikien on the spot and ask him if he were to name some Deadwood ministers who will make the list. Presidency confirms plans to rejig cabinet. This could lead to shoving aside officials who haven't pulled their weight over after more than one year in office. Cut stops PDP, NWC governors, BOT from dissolving reverse party executives. I'll upload integrity of judiciary, says CGN Kekere Kun. As Senate confirms appointment, you can see her there in the picture taking a bow at the Senate chamber. Prices of beans, rice, other food items saw in August 2024, according to NBS. In fact, report has it that the bag of rice is now up to 105,000 naira. Anyway, we'll move on to other alternatives at this rate. Senate approves new 288 billion naira supplementary budget for FCT. That's all on this Nigeria. Let's move to the punch. All right. On the punch newspapers this morning, it says cabinet shake up. Tinubu demands 46 ministers fresh scorecards as lobby begins. Cabinet rejig will be, will be based on ministers' performance as presidency. Political bigwigs, ministers intensifying lobbying. It's, it's just very interesting. It really just tells you what the, the mentality is concerning these ministerial roles. It's, it's not necessarily, it doesn't seem like it's about service. If you are hearing about this type of lobbying for people to become ministers, it's not, it's not necessarily about service. They'll go and wait in Osborne very soon. <laughs> well, Yahaya Bello, EFCC files fresh 110 billionaire fraud charges. Uh, Dangote refineries, marketers plan direct petrol purchase. Federal government proposes NIN and tax for foreigners. Kikirekun Kikire warns uh, judges against corruption after Senate confirmation. And also Bob Risky. Minister orders alleged bribery probe. Fallon plans suit. And also Edupo marred by vote buying. Delay, says uh, NBA observers. Those are the big stories on the um, Punch newspapers this morning. Daily Trust comes up next. All right. Uh, on the front page of the Daily Trust, hardship. Civil servants go to work twice a week. Even feeding is difficult. Only Lagos, Ogun, Oshun approve of days. We pretend we don't know what's happening, according to director. It will lead to low productivity, analyst says. Publish your investigation report, discharged female soldier tells Ami. And I think that this is very important. It's on page 10 of the Daily Trust. Maybe we'll start off with the conversation. Uh, Kekere can confirm that CGN vows not to condone corruption. 2009 agreement, salaries, ASU gives federal government 14 day ultimatum. Bob Risky, federal government probes allegation against uh, prison CG. MSMEs can't survive on current interest rates, according to Fidelity Bank MD. And why Tinubu can't intervene in Dangote NNPCL fuel price feud, according to the presidency. The presidency says President Bola Tinubu will not intervene in the controversy that ensued between Dangote and NNPC over the price of PMS. Uh, speaking with State House correspondents on Wednesday, Baya Onanuga said the downstream petroleum sector has been deregulated. I mean, there are further details as to why, you know, they said, they, but we probably will get into that. Uh, Sikian, mm. I'm wondering which story we should begin with. Minister, please. All right, let's start with the ministers with Jigin. Mm -hmm. uh, do, do, so let's, let's ask the cabinet shake up. So that will be from the punch. Tinubu demands 46 ministers, fresh scorecards as lobby begins. Your thoughts on the potential rejigging of the cabinet that may or may not happen on or before the October, the first of October? Um, first and foremost, I don't think uh, they need to tell Nigerians that they need to rejig or, or reshuffle cabinet. Um, you don't get to hear from the government of the United States of America, United Kingdom, or any of these countries telling that we are about changing ministers. We don't, we don't announce that. Is something that you do quietly. You must have your KIP. You must have done your due diligence. And when you want to do that, you just a few hours or probably a day or two before they just call the ministers and say you'll be dropped. You know, because the essence you what to do is that by making those unnecessary announcements, then you're putting everybody under pressure. Those that want to steal will use the opportunity to steal, steal the more. 
and uh, those that know that they're not coming back, we want to do everything shall be to be able to cover their traps. So it's not so. The issue of uh, going to uh, is going to be one of people. Personal, that's my personal opinion. You don't need to tell us. Just do the right thing. Then starting with the ministers, um, I think we will start from sacking the president. Don't forget that the, you've forgotten that the president is a minister. President is the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and also the Minister of Petroleum. So we and need as, to start. As you're talking about that, in fact, I wanted to read something. You're very in the spirit. Okay. Uh, the PMS, this is Bayon Onuga's mm. response okay. to why the presidency is not intervening in the feud between NMPC mm. and Dangote. Mm. The PMS regime has been deregulated. Dangote is a private company. Mm. NNPC should not forget that it is a public limited liability company, he mm. said. Mm. Whatever controversy both of them are having is their problem. They are operating in terms of PIA. NMPC on, is on its own, even though it's owned by the federal government, the state government and local councils and everything, but it's operating as a limited liability company. So he said that it's their business. That is why I'm saying that the president should be sacked as the minister. I'm not saying sack the president. I say sack as a minister because the president is, if we're having 45 ministers, the president is number 46. He's the minister of petroleum. And if I look at that sector and what has happened within that sector in the past two years, then he has not performed. Forget the fact that we have the Dangote refinery on stream. But the promises made to Nigerians in the past one year that if, um, um, the Potako refinery will come on stream, we have been promised six times. They've moved that put six times. And if, if the president is the minister of petroleum, and that we're going to use that, the KIP on that to be able to judge him as a minister, then he has failed. That is one. That's so the minister and his minister uh, of state. But generally, if, you give, if I give my um, assessment of the situation, I would say that I don't have about, you cannot pick points about more than five ministers that have performed to, to me. I, I run a program called Inside Politics to CKN on Silver Bay Television every Friday. And last week, I focused on this topic. That was what I, all I did. And I opened up the line for Nigerians to call. You need to see, see what Nigerians were saying. And each and every one of them had a reason why. They, yeah, if you say you're going to put me on the spot, and I thought you would have, but let me put myself on the spot. Remove the minister of FCT, probably the minister of works, the minister of uh, aviation, interior. minister of interior. Four, I don't know if there's any other one that I can be point that I'll be able to perform. Those, for me, for me, those are the four, four runners as it were, as far as this government is concerned. Every other person around there, even um, the Minister of Solid Mirror that I expect so much from, so much from, I've not seen so much happening in that uh, because, because, Boston to because, ICT, because uh, uh, ICT. He came with so much promises, but nothing. That is me. Then you go to power. The one that said that we should be putting up our freezer and be putting up our fridge. And every, what is only interested is increasing tariff, asking the, uh, the regulatory authorities to, um, to increase tariff every time. Are you come to realize that? Using air condition is not a luxury in Nigeria. Are you aware of that? Very aware. No, many people, many people cannot afford to put on their... That it has become a luxury item. Even in the, in the, in the, even those, of, those that they say are on band, band A and band whatever are complaining. So is it, do he need to tell me how much he has added to the national grid in the past way and what we have done to upgrade to from what he got and what we have. So those are the narratives for me. So good enough. Uh, you know, the president set up, uh, um, appointed a special advisor on uh, uh, monetary. I don't know. The, yeah. uh, I don't. I can't remember the um, the designation now. But uh, that lady. The that? The yes, the of yeah, So I, I, I want to see the KPI. I want to see what is used to be able to bet. For me, I think that is a VRD. Because at the end of it all, what people will be talking about in the next four years, I know the ministers. They're going to be talking about. President Bola Tinubu. Like now, can you remember how many ministers were in um, uh, former President uh, Buhari's regime? But whenever there's a reference, you say, during Buhari's government. That's what everybody say. During good luck Jonathan's government. Yeah. During Yaradua's government. During OBJ's. Nobody's going to mention a single minister. So the president has to get it right. If he has a vision, he must be able to get it. Because I believe that most of these guys were just political appointees that he doesn't even know. Most of them. Uh, just people that we have picked and forwarded to him. Now he has worked with them. He has been on the stage now. I think this is the right time for him to hit the ground running and making sure they have people who are, will be able to work with. And most often than not, not just political appointees, those that have... You saw what happened during the um, president of Obasanjo's The guy went for technocrats, for goodness sake.
He wasn't looking at party, my party, or no party. That is why you got people like Ngozi Okonje, Obi Ezekwe Suli, um, um, even Asi Rupai that was at BPE, and so many others. And you saw the performance and what, what happened. So for me, I think it's, the, it's for the president to be able to see. Let's see what he's going to pick. But what we have now is what we call in football second 11. Just like yesterday, when Arsenal played, look at the boys that we are used. Just the same year old boys. They, they did the job by defeating their team by five goes to one. Yeah, um, good thing you didn't mention Manchester United because you would have seen real tears. Now, uh, well, I mean, man, you fan, forget, don't so, worry. We'll, but that's why they I will rise through. again. Yes, yeah, that's why we are in red. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, so I, don't, I, I don't want you to see red. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think it's also important, you know, mm. some, some names exist, but they almost don't exist. Many people will forget that Boye Gawetola is a minister currently. Yeah. Minister of Blue, Blue Economy. Economy. Maya Blue Economy. Yes. What is happening in the sector? He is one of those names that exist, but four years is going to go by, and yeah. you would barely remember that this person was ever a minister. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Before we continue with the ministerial scorecard here, let's uh, take a call from Mr. Julius. Good morning. Thank you for calling. Mr. Julius, can you please turn down the volume of your TV set and then go ahead with your conversation? Oh. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Go, go ahead. ahead. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I can do that now. How are you, people? We're very well, thank you. Please go ahead. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Nice seeing you, people, this morning. Thank you very much. Yeah. Please, I just want to comment on uh, the last person that uh, you people are interviewed. That uh, that uh, allergy that you people interviewed. I never know that there are people in Nigeria like that man. I never know that uh, there are men existing in this country that can come out and speak the truth. Please, I want to encourage you people to help Nigerians bring out men like that so that they can speak the truth. Because I know that with such men saying the truth openly, it might touch the heart of those that are our leaders. Because I know that a lot of women are surrounding them, questionable characters are surrounding them, and they are human beings. So the only thing I want to encourage you to know is if such men can be God every day, at least if they can come out once in a week and speak, All right. it will All get right. to the ears of our leaders All right. and we'll have a change. Mr. Julius, thank All you very right, much you. for calling. Uh, so we're still talking very quickly about the cabinet shakeup, and mm -hmm. you, you were you were talking about some of the ministers that have maybe performed. So, what about uh, the minister of, <coughs> minister of women affairs? Why, okay. always, why are you always asking me for the uh, minister of women affairs? <laughs> the last time I was something was by the same to ask me. I did. Yes, you did. Oh, you I, can't, I can't seem to. Uh, maybe about. because you're a woman. Okay, yes, let's, I am. let's go there. And I'm very okay. passionate about I just about want women. to save you the. Well, uh, she's neither here nor there. Um, I believe that, um, yes, she had her work cut out. Uh, but the way Amana she goes about her duties is not that. You remember, the, I remind you again for you to remember that. I, I think that was the day I was saying that. Why is it that maybe we should have minister, minister, minister of men? Men affairs. Yes, I remember. No, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember. So, you remember now. Yes, sir. Uh, so, so um, I believe that um, to a large extent, I should be able to. Do what she ought to do, but it's the way and manner she goes about it. You know, there's a way you can be able to do your job, but the controversial issues surrounding her ministry don't. Let us even take this. Let, let's take the letter. The lady that was um, had been disengaged um, by the by the um, by the army yeah. um, uh, yesterday. She came me out yesterday to yeah. say something. You know, the military came out with that statement that, oh, she was disengaged because of medical issues, mental issues, blah, blah, blah. And okay, that is why she, the lady has come out to say, no. If you read the report, she said that she had a one-on-one -on -one with the Minister of Women Affairs. And it was the Women Affairs Minister that actually asked her to drop her letter. And um, that she finally did. But that she's so surprised now that that is being tied to mental issues and that the issue of mental issues were not discussed but the only thing that it was discussed on, uh, around that is that okay that, that may en uh, enable her to get her entitlement or whatever and the rest of them so that she will want the woman to come out the minister to come out and say what happened as a mother that in itself in as much as i don't want to say that may be the truth but that is the level of it 
then the existent ways of going about. Let me tell you, my idea of a uh, minister of women affairs is the days of Miriam Abanguda. That woman, I don't think there's any other, any first lady that ever achieved what is better life for rural women. We saw how successful that program was, including the Beijing conference that we had. And you saw the way she touched the lives of men. She was, she was the first lady. She wasn't the right. minister of, you understand what I mean? Yep. Those are the kind of narrative I want to see a minister because you are not, in as much as we have minister for youth development, minister of women affairs, this not only with women, but also children. children. Because when you are dealing with the woman, you are dealing with her children. So how far have we gone in dealing with issues? That, so those are, that, that's for me is the narrative. So I, I may not be in a better, you should be yeah. in a better position to so be able to I, I, I mean, I, I'm glad that you mentioned this, you know, and I really want to highlight it. It's a story mm. of private Ruth Ogunleye, yeah. which is one of the stories I'd wanted to take it mm. earlier, mm -hmm. who had come out to call out Colonel I.B. Abdul Karim mm -hmm. on TikTok, saying mm -hmm. that he had sexually harassed her. Unfortunately, now... She mentioned, she actually mentioned two colonels and one brigadier general. Right, not yeah. Just two, one. So, so, um, so there's Colonel I.B. Abdul Karim, Colonel G.S. Ogo, and Brigadier General I.B. Shulebo. Yeah. Said they made her life unbearable. Mm -hmm. Now, investigation has occurred. They've now said that they have fired her due to mental illness. But like Business. you said, yeah. she has called on uh, the Minister of Women Affairs, Obiano Ju, uh, Ohanaye Uju uh, yeah, Kennedy, Kennedy yeah. to say that, look, you asked me to voluntarily submit yeah. my letter. Mm -hmm. Please come out and say what's happened. So I'm hoping that this is something that the Ministry what of is, Women what Affairs... What is even more intriguing for me is that the Army was so silent on the investigation. Yeah. They didn't come out to tell us yeah, what she, the actual... She has asked that they publish yeah, the details. Uh, can you hold on? Let's speak with uh, Kola Wale. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, please go ahead. Let me tell you, the man with you is very correct. The president is the minister of petroleum. Petroleum, they are afraid of in the country. I work with Mobi, and I know the integrity in Mobi. 1975, we produced crude oil. If I tell you the statistics of producing crude oil, crude oil, 800 other accessories come from crude oil. 14 major ones is the one you will get. Where is the money for those 14? You bring fuel from overseas, you pay do marriage, you pay transportation, but now Dangote is there. You are not paying anything like that. Why are they telling us cost of fuel will not come down? Cost of fuel for Nigeria should not be more than 300 naira. Call me, I will give you the statistics. Dangote has just spoken with Boombaga, and he has exposed them. They should allow this country, the masses, to enjoy the dividend of what God has given us. The president, who is the uh, minister of petroleum, should bring the kaba, those kaba in the petroleum industry that are donating billions, billions that they should invest in their own state to see people to enjoy things. They are using billion now, donating billion all around. The president is the president and is the minister of petroleum. He should deal with the Kaba. He should not think of second term. Deal with the Kaba and let the masses put you in for second term. That is my thinking for this morning and my thought for Nigeria and my contribution to the newspaper this morning. Thank right. you. All right, thanks a lot. You know, let's move to another, you know, conversation this morning. Um, on the punch, it says that Yahya Bello EFCC files fresh t uh, 110 billion naira fraud charges. And also, if you look at the bottom of, you know, the punch, you know, there's the Bob uh, story there, which, of course, also robs uh, the EFCC. So I, I want to merge, you know, both of them. Mm -hmm. I saw that the Minister of Interior has also ordered an investigation, you know, into the allegations that, um, you know, Bob did not spend um, his six months in jail in, you know, an actual prison. Mm -hmm. um, we've also seen the EFCC chairman, you know, order an, in, an investigation. 
Um, but I mean, if you can merge both of them, just you just get your reactions. Yes, we can merge them. Um, the EFCC uh, new 115 or so billion naira um, charges against uh, former governor Yaya Bello. And um, don't also forget that news coming is that Yaya Bello has gone to the Supreme Court. Yeah. Right, so to stop his trial. Uh, this um, is very, very embarrassing for me uh, because this brings to question. What was, so we've had something similar in the past, and um, it's not, just that Nigerians are short uh, when it comes to history. That was a governor, former governor of River State. Uh, what was his name? Uh, Peter Dili. Yeah. That was charged for fraud and for embezzlement and the rest of them. And that case got up to the Supreme Court, where um, agencies of government we are asked to stop the investigation. Have you ever heard that before? Peter Billy to today has not, was not investigated. And many people alluded to that. And that is when we come, the problem with some, our judiciary that people... That was, I was when I was listening to the new uh, uh, CJN yesterday talking that, oh, corruption within the system is going to be dealt with, and I was just smiling. Because at the Supreme Court, Peter Billy, graph agencies were stopped from investigating Peter Odili indefinitely. And the wife was in Supreme Court then. Till today, nobody has said anything. Now. And we have seen what happened. The fact remains that why is it difficult for EFCC and security agencies to be able to pick up Yaya yeah, yeah, That's a very good question you've asked. Well, let's hold our thought and take a call from Victor calling from Calabar. Good morning, Victor. Yeah, good morning. All right, please go ahead. Victor, can you please go ahead with your comment? Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm calling in respect of the foil crisis. All right. Hello? We, yeah, we can hear yeah, you. Please can go hear ahead. You. All right, yes. it seems that, yeah. Yes. So, that is that. So, the question I've asked is that why is it difficult for security agencies, including EFCC, because the order was given, yes, for EFCC to be able to apprehend or to pick up the yeah, yeah, But that also means every security agency in Nigeria, wherever you see him, yep. pick him up. That's what that means. Because even if, you're, even if you send that to Interpol, so the question is, if it's any other Nigerian, they would have picked them up. Somebody is telling me, oh, it's because the, um, uh, the governor of Kogi State is trying to be... You are not going for the governor of Kogi. Even if he's seen with the governor of Kogi State, you can be so able that's, to... So that's the excuse that so, EFCC has yes, given that... that that um, Yahya Bello came to their car park mm. with the governor who yeah. has immunity yeah. and they were holding hands and yeah. any attempt also they cannot be say yeah, they said that any attempt to pick him up because yeah. the governor of course doesn't work here. no he's working with the security uh, detail they say it will have led to anarchy which they anarchy are which anarchy which anarchy for goodness sake they are holding hands any attempt to you are not arresting the governor of Kogi State. You are arresting the former governor of. But Kogi. remember, it's so the same the, governor of Kogi State mm. that did not allow the arrest of the former governor sometime back. In let April. me tell you, let me let me say this: until we have the political will to do what it needs to be done, we won't get it right. I personally want to believe that some people in government, even at the highest level, presidents, if the president gives the necessary instruction today for Yaya Bello to be picked up, he'll be picked up based on God. The, those. Uh, 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 judge is, uh, so, for him to be doing what he's doing definitely means that we have a saying in my, in my village. When you see a man dancing uh, by the push path, the person where they play the drum, they inside bush. Yeah. That summarizes what So, let's go to Bobrisky. Bobrisky and a very dark uh, woman is a big case and very, 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 very embarrassing. Uh, but, but, but would you say not shocking? No, of course not. When it's embarrassing, it's not shocking. No, no, no. No, it's, saying, not, no, it's not, not shocking. shocking. Exactly. No, no, it's not shocking. No, shock, okay. Nothing shocks me about Nigeria. I say it here time and time again that Nigeria is just like Charlie Boy. Have you forgotten what I used to say? Yeah. Mm -hmm. anything, anything can happen on Charlie Boy. So that, no, for shock, no, no, I wasn't shocked. But that these revelations were made, for him to come back and be saying what he's saying, that, oh, no, he did that, is a lie. It's second guess. Now, uh, Faust was accused. First, I've come out to say, if you look at the statement that was first said, within that statement, you will see that he even uh, he acknowledged that uh, Bob Risky contacted him yes. to give him three million naira, that he wants to use it in that. The fact remains that, good enough, the Minister of Interior 
have asked that that of prison should be investigated. The EFCC have asked for that other side to also be investigated. We need that investigation ASAP within 48 hours. They can get this done. So that we don't move, they don't just repeat under the carpet that because what they have done is very, very embarrassing. What is happening is embarrassing. They should call a very dark man to present his case. They should call Bob Risky to Then they should look at the accounts. There were figures that were, there were uh, people that were mentioned. Those that were figures. I am not so, You say I'm shocked. I'm not shocked. Because it happens. Let me tell you, give you a classical example. Some time ago, I told you that for about 13 days, I was locked up at Ikoi prison. Mm. Yes, now. Maybe today they talk. Yes, I was. If you're a journalist, if you never go to prison, you never. You never uh, I'm not you a go, you, you Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm obviously not a journalist. You, are you, never, you never practice. You never. Also, <laughs> <laughs> don't they pick you? When they lock you there for one year, you never practice. <laughs> you are shaking your head. That's how I was shaking my head too until I was picked up. You know, for a story that I published in 2015, and I said it that the the cyber crime law that was passed, that was signed into law 2015 by former president, uh, um, good Lord Jonathan, as he was leaving. Yeah. I was the first person that was used as guinea pig to test that this thing. And I was locked up at Ikoi uh, prison for 13 days and um, I was released and rest of them. Within Ikoi prison, let me tell you that there are VIP, there are VVIP lodges. Okay? Okay. Yes, there, if you have the money, you can pay to be kept at the VIP. Most of those people, ministers, all these big, big that's boys, where they, that's yes. where they keep okay. them. Then you have other one, pop, you have popular side. You know what we call popular when we go to watch football. Everyone. You know they're popular. Everyone, this thing. Now, there are some privileges that some of these prisoners get that others don't get. So, for prisoners to come out and say that, oh, that she, he was kept away, he was, there is that possibility. I'm not saying it's true, but there is the possibility that that happened. But that says a very, very terrible precedent. If it's not that issue is not dealt with, so those, that issue should be the federal government should be highly embarrassed, and the heads must roll if this is find if it's find out that, that this is the truth, beginning from the head, not just because you know what we normally do is that uh, they will not pick up one or two small small boys and say that, including it. Let me look at what happened. The the Donald Trump, yeah. you saw the attempt on his life. Yeah, and at the end of it all. This, the, the director of the state security, what they call them now, SSS. SSS, their, their own SSS, yeah. the woman came and resigned. She wasn't the one that was protected. She wasn't the one that was on ground to protect Secret the Secret Service, I beg your pardon. Secret Service, Secret yeah. Service. She wasn't the one on ground, but she was the head of the security, that security happy. And she said, after the interrogation and resignation, she came out and resigned and said, I have, I, I go. And that doesn't happen in Nigeria. So this issue should be investigated properly. We, so that we don't turn ourselves to a laughing, a laughing stock. But the fact is that so many issues have not been raised about the EFCC, the integrity of the EFCC, and also the integrity of Nigerian prison. Yeah. And that is terrible. All right. Sikian, thank you for joining us. We uh, are done, Abby. We are done. <laughs> <laughs> we are done. <laughs>